Hello Brigadiers and Brigadettes, this is your captain speaking. Welcome to my channel, now let's jump into some hockey content. Hello everybody, happy Wednesday. If you are new, please make sure to subscribe and then give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, that's for everybody. So yes, we will be talking about just a breakdown of how the playoffs have gone so far, Stanley Cup playoffs, so let's dive in. So, we're going to be talking about the Minnesota Wild and how they're tied with the Vegas Golden Knights to start off the video. And winning game one against Vegas is huge for Minnesota. If they can go back to Minnesota and pin Vegas into a corner by winning those two games, that's going to be huge. And we'll see what that storyline is going into game three. And then after game three, whatever the outcome is, obviously that'll be big. Because it could be Minnesota going up 2-1 or them down 1-2. And... For Minnesota, the game plan has to be a lot more similar, 5-on-5 five five at least, for what game one was, as they were even with Vegas for scoring or high danger chances, 9-9. Nine to nine. However, in game two, Vegas led the category of high danger chances, 12-6. to six. So Minnesota needs to get back on that track for 5-on-5 five five play at least. Also, it will be interesting to see if Minnesota can stay off the PK, because it's going to be a matter of time before Vegas makes them pay for that. Vegas went on the power play three times in games one, or game one, and that's not going to be able to work going forward in this series. Now we'll be talking about the New York Islanders, how they are tied with the Pittsburgh Penguins. And in a surprising game one, Kyle Palmieri scored two goals, and the Islanders won a high-scoring surprise game one in overtime. And just like I predicted in one of my previous videos, maybe I'll leave the link towards the end, I said Palmer is going to have to be a guy that stepped up since they traded to get him for his goal scoring ability. And what do you know, in game one he scores two goals. So, there you go. I was right once. One time, it's all I need, makes me happy. And he'll have to do that again, along with some other Islanders. Also, we'll have to keep out a eye on how these teams win. Game one, seven goals combined, the Islanders win. Did you expect that? Probably not. Game two, the Penguins win when there's three combined goals. So it's kind of weird. We'll see if the roles get reversed and things go back to normal in the rest of the series. But something to keep an eye out for because they're winning in unusual ways that they don't usually do. Now we'll be talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning leading the Boston, or leading the Florida Panthers, that is, excuse me, 2 to nothing. Uh, it's clear that Chris Drieger probably needs to be in net. I know Bobrovsky makes a lot of money, but it doesn't matter. Drieger needs to be in net. And if he, you know has some issues. Maybe you could put Spencer Knight in there. I don't know if he's actually on the roster right now. I think he is from what I remember, but that's going to be something we have to keep an eye out on. It's pretty evident that the Panthers are struggling to keep the Lightning offense down, so maybe you just hope and pray for the best for Drieger and then focus more on an offensive game. I don't know. It's tough because Tampa Bay is loaded. And then we will see a big storyline now will be can Florida win what they would need? Four more wins, correct? Yes. Could they win four games against Tampa Bay out of their next five. Most teams can't do that in the regular season or whatever that would be, but can they do it here? We'll see. I'm not so sure, but with Drieger in it, things should be a little bit more beneficial and in the favor of the Panthers compared to when Bobrovsky's in net. Now we'll be moving on into the Boston Bruins being tied with the Washington Capitals. And in my notes, I said the Bruins are tied with the Bruins. Makes sense, yeah. You get the picture, though. And a big storyline here is whether or not Craig Anderson can be sturdy and net for the Capitals. He is 39, but, you know, he had a good first game, but he only faced, I think, 22 shots. Game two, he faced double that, over double that, actually, with 48. That's not going to work, especially for a goalie of that age. Um, you can't have a 39-year-old goalie expecting him to get you those wins against a quality team like Boston. That's going to be a big storyline, though. Love Craig Anderson, great guy. We'll see if he can keep it up, though. And then it appears the Capitals have even more troubles to deal with. They're trying to keep the perfection line at bay. And while they're doing that, guess what? Now you have to worry about Charlie McAvoy. Um, player you should probably keep your eye on, especially 5-on-5. Five five, um, other areas as well, good two-way player. But offensively, he leads the Bruins in scoring chances 5-on-5 five five with 12 in Game 1, led the Bruins there. And then in Game 2, led them again with 19. And oh yeah, Taylor Hall. You know, that guy that they traded for. He only had six scoring chances in game one, 5-on-5. Five five. In game two, he was tied for second with 17. Capitals, I really don't envy you. It's going to be difficult to beat the Bruins. But it's been really fun. That's been probably one of the most entertaining series so far. 
and then we're getting close to finishing off these things. Be patient with me. I hope you're enjoying this. And we'll be talking about the Hurricanes leading the pan the Predators. What is with me today? But they lead the Predators one to nothing. And a big thing I want to talk about here is that the Predators let the Hurricanes get on the power play four times. That is not going to work if you want to win this series. It cannot happen. And I didn't get to watch the game, so I don't know. Maybe there were some bad calls. If you're a Predators fan, maybe you could say there were. I don't know. It always seems funny to hear it from the fans. But, you know, it's not going to work because you have Yusei Soros, who is the third worst goalie when it comes to goal saved against average on the PK. It's not going to work, especially with the way Carolina plays. You can't do that. Also, kudos to the Predators for getting on the power play three times themselves. You're going to have to score one of those if you want to stay in this series, though. My thought process, if you you know, if you get three or more power plays a game, you should score at least one. And I know that some teams struggle to score a little bit. They have trouble in the power play. It doesn't matter. You get three or more opportunities, you have to score at least one, especially against a team like Carolina. A power play is a gift. I've said that before. You have to take advantage of that. Not easy, though. I am aware of that. Side note, I think that you should uh, keep an eye on Matt Duchesne. He only played about 10 minutes. He did get an assist, but if there was ever a time for Matt Duchesne to come back to life, now would be the time for Nashville. Um, don't think it'll happen, but maybe. I don't know. That'll be interesting to see. And then the final series we'll be talking about is the Colorado Avalanche leading the St. Louis Blues 1-0. For the Blues, it's pretty simple. Don't play how you did in Game 1. Because that didn't work. Giving up 49 shots a game, especially against a team like Carol or Colorado, it's not going to work. And for the Avalanche, just do what you did in game one. You led with 36 5 on 5 scoring chances. St. Louis only had 19 total scoring chances. That is power, that's everything. They only had 19 scoring chances the whole game. Colorado had 36 5 on 5. And all you got to say with that is credit to Bennington. Bennington played really well and you know you face that many shots you only give up three goals with the avalanche having three less high danger chances than the st louis blues had scoring chances so that's going to be something to keep an eye on in this series can bennington keep playing like this can the blues fix their game we'll see i don't know i think colorado is a high powered offense that is going to be hard to beat and let me know what the most shocking thing is for you so far in these playoffs Again, please make sure to subscribe if you are new, and everybody give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for staying with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And everybody, hey, stay safe, have a great day, and stay away from COVID, all right? Goodbye, Brigadiers and Brigadettes. This is your captain signing off. Have a great night.